The world is a wondrous and confusing place. The advancement of science and history and expansion of our knowledge of the Earth gives us a more comprehensive view of our world than ever before. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three mysterious discoveries. Alaska woman finds memory card with chilling footage. What would you do if you randomly found a memory card labeled homicide on the ground near your grocery store? For one woman in Alaska, she opened it and helped police find the suspect before they even knew that there was a victim. Inside the memory card were photos and videos detailing a chilling event that had occurred the month prior. After the citizen turned in the card, a victim was found near a highway south of Anchorage. The Samaritan quickly called the police and submitted the evidence, which led to the arrest of 48-year-old Brian Stephen Smith. The authorities praised the woman for finding the card and calling it in, as they would have otherwise not solved the case as quickly as they did. The memory card stored 39 photos and 12 videos of the event. The woman in question was recorded in a hotel room while a man carried out the attack. The videos showed that the man spoke with a foreign accent and that the woman also unsuccessfully fought back and tried to scratch at his wrists. The timestamps of these pictures show that the woman and perpetrator were in the room at 1am on September the 4th, 2019. The following images were taken a few hours later and show the woman wrapped in a white blanket on a luggage cart just outside the hotel in the parking lot. The final photographs were taken in early September and show the woman in the back of a truck. Two days after police received the memory card, the woman's remains were discovered along the Seward Highway, about 20 miles south of Anchorage. The police first needed to determine whether the information on the memory card was staged or whether an actual crime had taken place. They believed the unidentified woman on the tape and the victim they found were the same but still needed to confirm her identity. Detectives investigating the memory card happened to recognize the man's South African accent, having contacted Smith in previous investigations. The authorities quickly gathered more evidence against Smith. He had booked a room at Town Place Suites by Marriott in Anchorage for two days, from September the 2nd to the 4th. The carpet from the hotel matched the one in the photos and videos. He also owns a black truck and his phone data places him near the victim's site within minutes of the photo's timestamp. Within days, Smith was arrested and taken into custody. Thanks to a stranger's chilling discovery and good thinking, police were quickly able to solve this dreadful crime and put a man behind bars. The Unsolved Disappearance of Thomas Nuzzi Thomas Nuzzi's family has been searching for him for the last decade after he mysteriously vanished on June 18, 2001. He was last seen by friends three days prior and was finally reported missing after failing to show up to work in Bethel, Alaska on the 19th. The last image of him was taken on the 18th at a gasoline station near the Super 8 Hotel on Minnesota Drive in Anchorage, where he was staying. Authorities found a receipt that showed Nuzzi had purchased chips, soda, two lighters and a pack of cigarettes at the gas station at 9.47pm. He was never seen or heard from after this. Police believe Nuzzi was on foot when he disappeared since his Jeep Cherokee was found 12 miles outside of the city at the Alpenglow ski area in Chugash State Park, and his bicycle was at his unlocked storage unit. Apparently, on June 15th, a woman and another man attempted to break into Nuzzi's car at the hotel, as reported by a security guard. The woman was also captured on the surveillance camera standing next to Nuzzi at the gas station. On his last known day, the same couple was once again spotted breaking into the Jeep. This time, the man was successful and drove off with the car. The following day, the day Nuzzi was reported as missing, a housekeeper of the hotel saw a man on Nuzzi's hotel room floor. When she came back later in the afternoon, the same man was sitting on the bed. He was not Nuzzi and she made him leave the room. Police consider the couple as persons of interest to the case but have not been identified or seen since. The woman is small, about 5 foot 2 inches and 105 pounds, Caucasian with medium long dark hair and possibly in her 20s. The man is dark skinned, tall, 
thin and has decaying teeth. They are suspected of having used Nuzzi's phone since all the recent calls on his phone were traced to unknown numbers. Many of the numbers are connected to motels, pages, and a halfway house. Nuzzi's nephew called back every single call, missed, dialed, or received, but none of the people who answered him had ever heard of his uncle before. Despite an extensive search for clues by authorities, they were unable to turn up any evidence or leads to Nuzzi's disappearance. He lived a quiet and reclusive life, working as a registered nurse and often traveling around the state for his employment. Because of this, he did not even have a permanent address and opted to live out of hotels. He has never been seen since that day and his case remains unsolved. The Mystery of Merian Lynn Carver In 2004, Merian Lynn Carver took a vacation cruise liner from Seattle, Washington to Vancouver, British Columbia. She boarded the ship on August 27th, but was last seen by her cabin attendant the next day. She never got off at any of the four stops along the way and did not board her return flight home to Boston, Massachusetts. She has been considered missing since then, despite years of her family searching for her. Carver was a 40-year-old single mother to one daughter. She had secretly booked a celebrity cruise trip for herself and left without telling any of her family members. Her father first reported her missing on September 7th, after her daughter called him asking for her mother's whereabouts. The police only realized she had left for a cruise after looking into her credit card records. The cruise line never reported her missing, despite constant memos from her attendant. He had noticed that her bed had not been slept in on the first night, but was ordered to ignore it and clean the room as usual. He submitted five notices to his supervisor about Carver's absence, but was told that someone else would handle it. The supervisor gathered Carver's belongings, but did not attempt to notify police or search for the missing passenger. The cruise line only reported Carver's disappearance after her father reached out to them. By then, the supervisor had already donated most of her possessions and only kept her purse and documents in storage. As per the cruise line's regulations, missing passengers must be reported, so Celebrity Cruises immediately fired this employee. Nonetheless, the cruise line was unhelpful in the search for Carver. They claimed her disappearance was most likely due to jumping overboard and did not attempt to investigate. It took nearly a month from her first disappearance for the family to learn that she had booked a cruise and an additional three days for the voyage to confirm that she was a passenger. Despite pleas from the father and personal investigators, Celebrity Cruise barely helped in the investigation. They claimed to delete surveillance footage after a few days, even though they kept it for 30 days. When the father asked for it, they ended up accidentally deleting the footage. He ended up hiring private investigators to try and figure out what happened to his daughter, spending over the next few years nearly $75,000. Carver's father had so much frustration with the investigation and cruise line that he ended up suing the company over her disappearance and lack of action. He founded the International Cruise Victims Organization in 2006 and constantly lobbied Congress to enact laws and regulations to hold cruise ships responsible for accidents and loss of life. He became the leading campaigner for cruise ship safety, initiating the Cruise Vessel Security and Safety Act of 2010. He was even awarded the Ronald Wilson Reagan Public Policy Award from the US Department of Justice in 2017 for his work. Despite all of his hard work and dedication to the safety of cruise ship passengers, he never learned the truth of what happened to his daughter. Carver's father died in December 2019 at 83 years old, with her case still unsolved. But what do you make of these disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.